The Nisan people have lived in what is now known as California for thousands and thousands of years. Local evidence shows the Nisan lived at Wakamatsu Farm in Placerville as far back as 4,500 years ago. Living in bark houses, they sustained themselves within the natural environment. The Nisanan were the first land stewards of Wakamatsu. The first people that lived here were so in tune with the world around them, they knew every plant, every animal, every stone and bird, tree and trail. They knew the cycles of the sun and the seasons. They knew their place within this world and took care of every living thing within their territories. The Nisanan practiced reciprocity, giving back when they took something. When they hunted for meat and gathered plants for food or medicine, they tended and nurtured what remained, ensuring an abundant future for all. The first people's lives were so intertwined and rooted in this environment, the land and water were thought of as kin, as relatives. This deep respect carried by the first people is why they thrived and lived so successfully for thousands and thousands of years. The native people of California lived with the land, gathering and caring for what was naturally occurring utilizing the gifts from Mother Earth, like the acorns from the mighty oak trees. Seasonally, the acorns fall from the branches to plant the next oak trees and provide food for many, like deer, squirrel, woodpeckers, and people too. The Nisidon, like the woodpeckers, knew when to gather and store acorn for the coming winter and throughout the year until they fall again. The process for preparing acorn has been passed down for many generations. Acorn must be shelled and ground into fine powder. Traditionally, this work was done in stone mortars. Have you ever seen rocks with bowl-like holes in them? The first people of these lands likely made them. Once acorn is ground into powder, it is rinsed or leached many times to remove the bitterness. When it is sweet to the taste, it is ready to be utilized, much the same way we use flour today. The Nisinan gathered many native grass seeds, roots, and tubers for food too. Some of those same plants are still growing at Wakamatsu. Looking around the Wakamatsu farm, we can find the California buckeye, one of the first trees to leaf out in the spring. The flowers have long white clusters that are very fragrant. When pollinated by the butterflies and the bees, they grow big, smooth, brown seeds that are considered poisonous by most, but the natives knew how to prepare them so they could be eaten. The soap root plant grows close to the ground and has wavy long blades. At the base, if you look closely, you'll see brown fibers, and if you dig deeper down, you'll discover a large bulb growing underground. The soap root bulb was utilized by California natives for food, glue, medicine, soap, as well as other uses. The fibers surrounding the bulb were made into brushes for hair, cleaning baskets, and sweeping. Elderberry is found on the Wakamatsu farm too. This treasured tree is a dear friend to those who know. Elderberry offers food, medicine, and music. If you don't know this tree, it can make you sick. There are many plants and much knowledge connected to this piece of land. Today, California is a victim of super fires or mega fires. This is a serious problem that is getting worse every year. Before, when native people cared for this land, the natives deliberately started small fires to manage the forests meadows, and woodlands. This practice cleaned the forest floors, cleared out the underbrush, and kept the meadows wide open. Low heat fires make the soil more fertile and the plants healthier with less crowding. Controlled burning forces some trees to grow taller while others stay smaller. Some tree seeds won't even sprout unless they are exposed to heat. Native people knew these things and cared for our forests for thousands of years, and there was a healthy balance. This native practice was outlawed and became a forbidden crime for more than a hundred years. Now we have the mega fires devastating entire communities. Today, forest managers are actively seeking and using the knowledge California natives have known all along. Many tribal communities are working hand in hand with land managers to improve the health of our natural world, but it is a long time to make up for, and we will have to work together to make the world a better place. The arrival of Europeans in California resulted in devastation for the native people. More than half of the native Californians died from infectious diseases. Then in 1849, the world rushed in searching for gold. The Nisinan, Miwok, and native people throughout the state became victims of tragic crimes, violent massacres, 
and bounties were put on their heads. When tens of thousands of gold seekers showed up in Eldorado County with no resources, the competition for food was fierce. The animals were hunted to extinction or near extinction. The rivers were polluted by mining practices. These actions devastated the natural world. Many starved. The native people of California had no way to compete with the newcomers with their guns and laws. Sadly, the loss of life and traditions of the Nisenan is a familiar story of the native nations all across the United States. Their part in local history is a great tragedy that still affects the hearts and minds of people who know today. Yet, the descendants of the first land stewards of Wakamatsu, the Nisenan, are still active in our community today. Some still come to Wakamatsu to touch the earth and gather plants for food, medicine, and tools. They share their knowledge and historical heritage with others, so the legacy continues. Hello, welcome. Kani Otaksuma, Pue, Pue, Yuni Manento. My name is Kimberly Shining Star, and I'm indigenous to these lands. The DNA of this land literally runs in my, in my blood and in my bones. My people have been land stewards here for thousands and thousands of years. We're Tumale, Nisinan, Miwok, the Northern Sierra Miwok people. And all around us is our place. And it was this time that Creator decided it was time to make man, to make a caretaker of Mother Earth. And we have a lot of layers to our creation stories, but the gist of those stories is that Creator made human beings, made our people so that we would take care of the Earth, so that we would take care of everything upon the Earth, so that we would take care of each other. And we were given the stories to burn the land, to burn the meadows, kept the forest floor open, we were given the stories to take care of the water. And that is our inherent responsibility as indigenous people of these lands is to take care of these things. You know, and a lot of time has passed that we have been unable to fulfill that commitment that Creator gave us. But we're coming to a time in this history and the story we call life where it's time to listen to the indigenous stories to learn how to take care and how to walk in balance again. Oh. As tribal populations are rising and the world is made aware of the need to take care of every living thing, not just humans, the governing bodies seek the traditional ecological knowledge of the first people. We circle back to the beginning, hoping we can live in balance once again.